Us Blue Jay fans wake up today looking to continue on the roll that they've been on as of late, looking to sweep the Rays and come to within two games of the Tampa Bay Rays for the wild card spot, which would be insane. Well, the Blue Jays did not have it today. They clearly didn't have it, and I think this is the definition of a young team. And I hate using that as, a, as an excuse. And before we break down the game, I wanted to bring that up. Because you're going to get some really nice games, some fun games to watch. You saw an 11-1 game a couple days ago against Tampa. You saw them win yesterday against Tampa. And we're like, wow, this team is so fun and exciting. And then you watch this game today and you're like, man, this team is a long ways away from being a contender. And that's the peaks and the valleys of a young, you know, I guess, position player core. Because the Jays do have the youngest in all of baseball. So, hopefully there's more peaks than there are valleys, but that today was one of those valleys. It was not a pretty game defensively by the Blue Jays. Rafael Dolis comes off the IL, and he was terrible today. The offense was nowhere to be found. Just an all-around rough game to watch for the Toronto Blue Jays as uh, they lose 5-1 to the Tampa Bay Rays. And with the loss, the Jays drop to 43-39 and on the year. But if there is a positive swing on this, going into this series, the Blue Jays were five games back of the Tampa Bay Rays for that, that wild card spot. Even with the loss today, they won the series. So now they're only four back of the Tampa Bay Rays for that... Uh, for that wild card spot. So you can take it for what it is. I mean, you can take the positive. Like, hey, well, we gained a game over this three-game stretch, which we did. So take it for what it is. All right? But let's 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 break this game down now. All right? Bottom of the second inning, Randall Gritchick actually gets this thing started off swimmingly for the Toronto Blue Jays as he crushes one to left field, and it's gone off of Ryan Yarborough. Putting the Jays in front, one nothing in the bottom of the second. All right, and after that, oh my God, Robbie Ray just cruising. Puts it in cruise control and just absolutely flies through five innings. He was stellar. But in the top of the sixth inning, he gives up a solo shot to, to Franco, tying the game at one. And then a few batters later, Austin Meadows rips the ball and, and Teoscar Hernandez defensively, hello, again, the defensive lapses from this team is just, you, you, you can't have it happen, especially in a tied ball game. Could have been, the, the play should have been made, could have been made, whatever word you want to use there. And does not get made. Austin Meadows rips an RBI double. Yanni Diaz comes in to score, making it a 2-1 game for the Tampa Bay Rays. And I got to be honest with you guys. When that happened, I had this gut sunk, sinking feeling inside me. That the game was over. It was only the sixth inning, right? But to that point, the Jays' offense had got nothing going. Like, absolutely nothing. So I'm like, hey, well, this team, is look, they, their reputation is they can, they can really do damage, so they're never out of a ball game. But there's this feeling inside me that tells me that this 2-1 game, you're not going to win this one. Now, I didn't know what was going to happen. I, and I was right with the whole of the, the fact that the offense didn't get anything going. The rest of the way. And then Rafael Dolis goes out there in the top of the ninth inning and just was not very good. Allowed three doubles, three runs. Uh, Austin Meadows rips, rips another RBI double. Yandy Diaz comes in to score. So it's a broken record, just like the sixth inning. Tyler, Ty, Taylor, Taylor Walls? Tyler Walls? Either way, Walls hits an RBI double. Brett Phillips, the pitcher, comes in to score on the play, making it a 4-1 raised lead. And then Mike Brasso hits a sacrifice fly. Francisco Mejia comes in to score, making it a 5-1 lead for the Tampa Bay Rays. And it wasn't pretty at all for Rafael Dolis. This guy coming into the year, obviously had a great season last year. We were expecting the similar things. It has not happened. He has not been very good. He's not been throwing a lot of strikes. When he is throwing strikes, he's throwing meatballs, getting crunched. And uh, it's not fun right now. I thought coming back from the injury, he kind of revitalized himself. and He'll be good to go. Well, he's not doing very well. Rafael Dolis is really struggling. I think it's time to take him out of a high leverage situation and just start getting him innings. Like the Tyler Chatwin of old. I'm not saying they're the same type player. That's a, that's a, that's a bold statement if that's the case. But Tyler Chow, remember how dominant he was to start the year? And then he instantly became your eighth inning guy because he was that good. And then he flipped the switch and was downright terrible. 
I'm hoping it's some like reverse psychology for Rafael Dolis. Goes into the low leverage situations, does fantastic, comes back into the high leverage, and continues that. I don't know. I think at this point you can't throw him out there. But then, but then at this point, who do you use? Well, I think we've I think we've now learned that Adam Simber's the real deal. I mean, he was great yet again today. He's scoreless as a Toronto Blue Jay. I, 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 he's your new eighth inning guy. I mean, there's no doubt about it that he should be. I mean, he pitched in the eighth today. If you have a one-run lead in the eighth inning going to him, then Romano, I think that's locked down. That's the way it should be in my opinion. But let's talk about these stats. I'll talk about the goods, the bads, all that stuff, all right? Offensively, well, we all know it wasn't pretty. The only guy who had multi-hit uh, multi game was Bo Bichette, who had two for four in the ballgame. Uh, the team had six hits and struck out 12 times. Not a pretty offensive day for the Toronto Blue Jays. But speaking of Bo Bichette, defensively was not a good day for him. A couple errors, a couple gross errors. He, you got to make these plays, my man. Uh, and But on the positive side of things, Bo Bichette was named an all-star reserve. So congrats to Bo Flos uh, for being named to the all-star reserves. So now we got Teo, we got Vladdy, we got Marcus Simeon starting in the all-star game. And then you have Bo Bichette as one of the reserves. So a pretty exciting time for Blue Jay fans. Uh, watching our young guns and Marcus Simeon uh, go out there into the All-Star game and, and and perform. I mean, Simeon's first All-Star game, Vladdy's first All-Star game, Teo's first All-Star game, Boba Shet's first All-Star game. It's going to be a lot of fun to see these guys go out there and have a good time for, uh, through All-Star weekend. Now, the pitching side of things. Robbie Ray was great. He was fantastic. Then he had a couple, a couple rough ones there in the sixth inning. Yeah, but... He was fantastic. Seven innings, a lot of five hits, two runs, walked two, but struck out six. He was fantastic. He, I, I thought he was dialed in right from the get-go. I, I think it was the top of the second inning where they had guys at second and third and nobody out, and he found a way to get out of it. Robbie Ray finds a way to do those types of things, I feel. And that's great to see. Unfortunately, the home run and the, the, the misplay by Teo in the outfield there, uh, Cost him a couple runs and, and unfortunately gives him the loss. Does not deserve it. That's why the win-loss column in, in baseball is completely useless. If you're talking about specific players. Obviously the standings for the teams, of course they matter. Um, but Adam Simber, as I mentioned, was fantastic again today. Went an inning, no hits, no walks, no runs. Gets a strikeout and a great job for Adam Simber. And then as we talked about, Rafael Dolis was not good at all. Went a third of an inning, allowed three hits, three runs. The only out he got was a, was via the strikeout. He wasn't pretty. And then Tyler Sacedo came out to clean up the mess. Went two-thirds of an inning, no hits, no walks, no runs. Nothing doing there for Tyler Sacedo. So a good job from him. Now, the Jays have an off day tomorrow before they head to Baltimore. I feel like we play, we're playing these guys a million times lately, which is a good thing. You're at Camden Yards starting on Tuesday. Steven Matz gets the ball in game one against the, the Orioles. It's to be determined right now for, for I think I think that was probably Dean Kramer's spot. And the Jays lit his it lit him up last time out. And they sent him down. So I don't know what's gonna happen there on Tuesday for the Baltimore Orioles. It's a 7.05 first pitch there at uh at Camden Yard in, in Baltimore. And for the Blue Jays, look, you can't worry about it too much. Like, like I mentioned off the top. You won the series against Tampa. You gained a game. You're now four back of them. You're watching the Yankees spiral out of control. And you're still playing pretty good baseball. Now you got a team in Baltimore who is not good. We all know this. Anything less than two out of three is a failure. The Jays have every opportunity to sweep this series against Baltimore. And they got to go out there and do a job starting in game one on Tuesday night. All right, so you know what, guys? That is going to do it for this one. If you enjoyed the video and enjoyed, well, didn't enjoy the game, but enjoyed the series overall because we won two or three. Smack the like button. to appreciate that. Hit the subscribe button if you guys are not already. Comment down below your thoughts on the video, your thoughts on the game. What you like, what you not like from today's ball game for the Toronto Blue Jays. All right, and I will talk to you guys, well, I guess it'll be Jays edition, on Tuesday between the Jays and Orioles in game one at Camden Yard. Steven Matz gets the ball for the Blue Jays in game one. Looking to... Continue the stretch of good starts, right? We had we had Ross Stripling was great. We had Alec Manoa was great. Robbie Ray was fantastic again today. Steven Matz, keep the train running on Tuesday night in Baltimore, right? So thank you guys so much for listening and watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. We'll talk to you guys then.